Razavani for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Delighted to have with me on camera, Josefa Iqbal. Josefa, how are we doing? I'm good, thank you very much. How's uh, the week been in Liverpool? Amazing. I think it's a, it's a good little town, Liverpool. Come, it's not exactly what I expected, so a very nice town. Um, normally when I look at your Instagram stories, um, when it's fight week, I'm always hearing it's fight week quite loudly. It's Mick Conlon fight week or Shannon Courtney fight week. It is Shannon Courtney fight week this week. Um, firstly, how is she looking? I think Shannon's in probably one of the best shapes I've ever seen her I in, mean, to be honest. Um, looking very, very good. Uh, we put some good time into her. You know what I mean? And, she, and she's been putting in the graft and putting in the work. She looks really well. She had some good momentum, obviously her last outing was against Ebony Bridges, uh, becoming the world champion, unfortunately had that injury, had a car crash as well, um, obviously good that she wasn't injured in the car crash, could have been a lot worse, but sometimes when you get such a high level victory, you kind of want to have a momentum and kind of want to get out in, in 20 weeks or 24 weeks time, so how's that been for you in terms of trying to keep her motivated and keep her kind of on, on the path, weight down, etc.? I think... Shannon's her own biggest motivator. Do you know what I mean? Um, I think we're always analysing her and she's consistent. Do you know what I mean? Even today at the press of today, she's she's very consistent in the things that she says. She's very consistent in the things that she wants. She doesn't change her mind and quiver her decisions, um, which is a good thing. And she's she's been in the gym since she's got that since she brought that belt back to the gym she's been in the gym she's been grafting and working and uh she knows what she wants and she's got her eyes on the prize she wants to keep that belt where it is um which is with her and uh she wants more so i think that's 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 the driving force for her and it's kept her on the right track when i spoke to her earlier today she said that when she went back to bed with her belt she still felt felt a little bit empty, mm. and she felt like what she needed was to capture more belts and more titles, and eventually become the undisputed yeah. champion. Is that almost a mindset that you ask, that you warrant off your fighters to say, you know, it's not just about achieving one world title; it's about going and achieving greatness to the best of your ability. One hundred percent. I think, I think you know, you know what there's. You see, you find these fighters in boxing where I think they're, I don't want to say in a rude way, uh, but it's like a one trip pony. They get a belt, they felt like they touched the belt now, they've got it, and they realistically they felt like they've, they've done it. You know what I mean? Um, so going into the next fight and the third fight or trying to defend the belt, I don't feel that they carry the same level of heart. Uh, but Shannon's definitely made herself clear to, to her whole team, to Adam Booth, the manager, me and Charlie coaches she's she's made her intentions clear where she wants to be in boxing and what she wants from boxing and god willing inshallah she gets that and and she's going all the way up against jamie mitchell uh from america training out of uh i believe the mayor of the boxing club uh undefeated i know she's had a couple of draws on her record um what do you kind of make of her demeanor this week very quiet reserved not really interested in doing too much media even on the top table today at the press conference literally two three word answers what do you made of the demeanor do you think that's that's who she is or is she just not interested in the media she just wants to get in on Saturday night yeah it could be loads of things um, I think I, I, I can't say in the sense that I don't know what her previous fight build ups have been like but we know we know Eddie and Matrim put on a tremendous uh, show do you know what I mean it's, it's, it's all the attention at once do you know what I mean and I think sometimes it's probably overwhelming for fighters they don't expect that there's going to be a camera here, a camera there. Oh gosh, listen, there's a seat here now. It's got my name. There's a little plaque here with, with a seat with my name on it. Maybe all of these things are sometimes a little bit overwhelming and they're, they're, they're struggling with the battle of trying to keep themselves focused for the fight. And, and at the same time, there's a lot of media too. So because I sense that as well, she's been very quiet. On top of it as well, she's not she's not in her early 20s. Do you know what I mean? She's 36 from, from what, what I saw. She's 36 years of age. She's at least got about 10, 10 years on channel at least. Um, so may, may, maybe it's a maturity thing maybe it's a mature thing maybe she's not drawn into the media maybe she doesn't care maybe she is overwhelmed do you know what I mean? No, absolutely 
What can we expect to see from Shannon? Obviously, as a coach, your role will be to ensure that she continuously improves, listens to you, and works on things that she probably didn't do as right as you probably wanted her to do in, in previous fights. So what can we expect to see from Shannon? When we backtrack and look at Shannon's fights here, every single fight she's been in has been action-packed. There's not one Shannon Courtney fight that you can think of that that wasn't action-packed. There was either a knockout, are you and me, and... Like I said, Godwin is Shannon that's always going to be doing the knockouts. Um, it was just packed full of action. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I think I think we're definitely in for, for an action-packed fight. I think the the teachings of Adam Booth as well in the gym is that we, we as coaches, we always like a clean operation. We're not trying to give people a, a brawl out and, and a bloody bath. No, we're, we're, we're clean operators. That's what we want to be. We want to be clean, professional operators. And Shannon has that ability. Shannon loves a fight. Shannon likes a bit of doghouse. Um, and I think God will ensure display some beautiful skills. She said something today in the press, which is very true. If she wants to show off her skills, she can do that. And if she wants to... Uh, meet centre ring and have a little dog house Shannon's capable of doing that as well so whatever it is God willing we're in for the win and we're in for a good fight come Saturday night OK well wish you all the best on Saturday night Jose for with that just before we let you or well, I let you go um, Saturday night also sees the trilogy the rematch that we've all been waiting for for a while in, and I'm talking about the heavyweight division uh, the Gypsy King Tyson Fury and, and Deontay Wilder. I'm sure you've been following it closely over the last couple of months on yeah, what, what's been going on. Um, he's obviously brought in Malik Scott. Um, you've, you've been in the industry a long time. Everyone knows Deontay Wilder to be that one-punch knockout artist, and I think any, everybody unanimously agrees that he's probably the hardest hitting heavyweight right now, if not of all time. With the videos that we've seen with Malik of Wilder almost fainting a lot, jabbing a lot, moving a lot, trying to set that right hand up more often, is that going to be easy for him to implement under the lights and when that bell rings? Or, from a fighter perspective, once the bell does ring, do demons come back in from that second fight? I rate you highly for that question. I think that's a beautiful question. I mean, it's a very intelligent question, in my opinion. Um, but you're absolutely right. I think they've had long enough to work on things where where they could have built like a slight second nature up, if you, if you know what I mean. If they've been, uh, um, if they've been drilling, then then that's excellent. If not, and you're right, there's there's, there's coming in underneath those ropes, seeing Fury's face again, bring back those demons again, and and he he knows that he wants to go off after that right hand, keep finding that right hand. That could be that that he, he could he could resort to that again. I hope I, I'm a massive, massive Tyson Fury fan. Um, uh, I've got a lot of love for the Gypsy King. I hope that he's got the same mindset as he did in the first two fights. Do you know what I mean? And I hope, I hope, I hope he, he's not resting on that. I hope that he's got the same mindset as he did for the first two fights. And it, it's not a thing where it's, he's in any which way uh, taking it lightly because you definitely know Wild, Wilder definitely wants to do the job. We know he's been very uh, open in, in the second fight on what he was going to do. Um, but do you, do you think he replicates fight one or fight two in, in his style? Who, Gypsy King or Tyson Fury? Tyson Fury. Um, I think fight two, if anything. I think he's going to go out in fight two. Um, and he's, he's, if... if, 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 if if Deontay Wilder has been working on the stuff that, like I said, like he's been showing, like the feint, it's going to be the battle of the feint. Who's feinting more? Who's jabbing more? And who's setting up? Who's disguising and setting up that right hand even better? That's what it's ultimately going to be. Prediction? I ain't saying that. I'm, I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to say Tyson Fury points. Tyson Fury points. Yeah. We look forward to it. Jose, I know you got to go and rock the gym. Got your clothes on. So thank you for giving me... Uh, Nine and a half minutes of your precious time. Very much appreciated. Wish you all the best on Saturday night with Shannon. And hopefully we'll catch up, or IFL will catch up with you definitely post-fight. Well, thank you very much, bro. Can I say a massive shout-out to all the brothers, Zen Lounge, Andy's Burgers, and Wicked and Bad. Shout-out, Bouncer. Thank you very much. You're done now. <laughs> Jose Faikbao, IFL TV. Thank you very much.